What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons in Focus podcast. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney, man of the hour. New Falcons cornerback, and people are pumped about this, Jeff Okuda yeah. joining us. Jeff, thank you so much for... Oh, man. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Falcons in Focus podcast. Yep, uh-huh. Jeff Okuda. And uh, we're going to start by going back in time, just like a little bit. Uh, let's see. <laughs> August 12th. 2022 i had to write this down i was actually at the game yeah we were there tori was there yeah. jeff was there falcons lions in detroit yeah preseason preseason game mm-hmm. preseason games generally not too consequential right personally no. i'm not personally, a big fan of preseason <laughs> games <laughs> really? but yeah I just, i'm just always kind of like let's just get to the regular season i know why they're important but yeah, yeah. i we were there in detroit and i was just kind of like hi like it's preseason game but for you it was actually a really important day. Big day. No, it was. That was my first game back um, from tearing my Achilles the previous season. So, you know, to be able to play that game meant the world to me. Because, I, you know, when you tear Achilles, one of them injuries where you don't really know what's next. You got yeah. to walk by faith a lot of the times. Oh, what a term. Walk by faith. Mm-hmm. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> but I will give you credit. You know, I, I just think it's so interesting, right? Because you you go through the whole process and then it's like, Wow. I did it. That felt normal, right? Like, yeah. What? Did you have like a moment where, because you always hear about like, you know, Achilles injuries specifically, where it's like you almost have to like start trusting your body again. Yeah. Like, do you remember that game and kind of having a moment where you're like, I can do this. I'm back. Things are good. Yeah, no, just just taking that feel with everyone, kind of taking in the game day environment. You know, I, I would say like when you get injured like that and you're out for such a like prolonged time you start to not take the little things for granted. So mm-hmm. for me, that day was really about like soaking it all in, like the little game day experience, walking out, seeing all the fans. And I mean, it was pretty cool that it was against the Falcons too, because it ultimately became a full circle moment, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, a year later. Now, do you, is there a moment of like the game day process that you, like when, when you're away from the game for so long, was there a moment that you're like, I didn't think that I was gonna miss this part of a game day, but I do, I miss this. Was there a moment for you like that? Honestly, I mean, I like to dress a little bit, so. Uh, so game day fits. I also love a game day fit moment. They're important to me. Yeah. So we're speaking the same language. Because I didn't realize, like, no, nah, you can't, some game day fits, you can't just wear to, like, other casual places. <laughs> like right? the grocery looks, store? It looks, looks awkward, so. <laughs> it's like, it only belongs there. I got hurt the first game of the season, so I had all these game day fits that were just <laughs> sitting there, and I couldn't really do anything with them for a year. Yeah. So they were just sitting on the shelf, and a year later, okay, now I can start putting this stuff on again. Right, yeah. And, and now, now they got a little purpose, so it's all cool. <laughs> we actually have this thing, it's called, what, it's called Sundays, I guess, and it's all about, Sundays like, Atlanta, yeah. pregame Falcons fits, and we mm-hmm. actually put it out during the game. So you're, you're calling your shot right now. You will be a <laughs> featured member. Yeah, it kind of looks yeah. like a... Yeah, I'm going to do a little something on there. Right, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make a couple cameos. It, so it's kind of like the way that they did, our creative team did such a good job, but it's kind of like a, it looks like a magazine. And the way that they put it together, it's like on Instagram and it looks kind of like different pages of a magazine and they take things that like we've written throughout the, the week okay. and kind of put it with pictures of all of y'all. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. So I, it took about three minutes to go completely off script. Now. I know. Right, <laughs> but, right, right. but I'm into this fashion thing like like <laughs> like how'd you get interested in it is something that you've always kind of been about like I know like Grady's really into it right? yeah Gra- Grady so. I don't know if you've talked to Grady but Grady does this really cool thing where he before the season ever starts he like picks out like specially made like outfits really before yeah, this, for, and he has it like I think I don't want to put words into his mouth but I think he like chooses which outfit he's like gonna wear when it's like schedule release. so, so, oh, so yeah. he like he like builds it yeah yes. ahead and then uh, when yeah. the comes you'll have to ask him about it because i don't know if that's 100 percent accurate but no yeah i mean i guess like i said i've always been into it but you know growing up i didn't necessarily have the financial means to yeah to really get the things that i wanted but i had an eye for it mm-hmm. so in college you know in college you start getting a little bit of stipend and you can get a little bit more. You can't really go over the top because totally. you're, uh-huh. you're still on a college budget. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. And then coming to the NFL, so okay, now I can get it, I can get some of the things that I've always always wanted. So I, I like the kind of creative part behind it. Like I know some guys like to pay people to mm-hmm. build their outfits, but I honestly just go in the closet a couple of days for the game, and I'm just trying to like put things together, uh-huh. and, and then like, I hope it works. So, <laughs> I hope it works. And then most time it does, but sometimes you might miss. But sometimes you, know, you look at a picture and you're like. 
I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I no, no, it's, it's never that. It's never, never that, that, though. That. <laughs> it's, never, it's never that, though. It's never that. But, like, it's like, okay, this didn't hit as hard as I know it could. Right, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's all right, though. It's yeah. all right, though. It's all right, though. That's <laughs> funny, man. So, as you look at from August 12, 2022, through that whole year, you play the whole season. Yeah. Play really well mm -hmm. for that whole year, right? So you, you're on this kind of injury roller coaster, but to be off of it, right, and just be you. How 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 gratifying was that? Just to go out there, play football like you always have. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was worry free or not, but like, what was that experience like? Kind of getting to be you. Man, it felt good just because um, coming into the NFL. I think that first year was a COVID year. Yeah. So that was a pretty weird year, you know, not playing in front of. Uh, I mean, I guess, like, coming into the league, you kind of have this idea of how it's supposed to look like and how it's supposed to go, obviously, that being, like, a lifelong dream. And to have, like, those that first season we played with no fans and, you know, all these, like, different rules and, like, regulations and whatnot, it was a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, obviously, like, some of those kind of get pulled back a little bit, but I turned my Achilles that first game of the year. So that, that kind of, like, delayed the NFL experience. Yeah, so right. So it brings to that third year where it's like, now, okay, I'm not taking this for granted anymore. Like, not that I was in the past, but you, I guess you have that realization that like these little things are important and uh, all these things will matter. So be able to play there all those all those games that I did. I mean, I enjoyed every single moment of it. You know, being part of the locker room, um, building chemistry with my teammates. Uh, it, it was something that like I won't really forget. And then obviously we started off the season in Detroit. I think one and six, mm -hmm. and then to finish nine and eight, I think it was just. Um, it was pretty cool to see that, like, I guess have that whole experience and not, like I said, not take those little things for granted, like just winning the games and how that feels and what can, what that can do for the morale of a whole locker room. I, I was able to see that witness that firsthand. Yeah, so. and <clears throat> that is really cool. And, you know, that kind of brings us to present day, but it's like, let's go back to, I think you, there was like a QA and a or something where uh, you said that, that if you were to bring somebody back to your hometown, like where would you take them? And you said the Warrior Bowl. Is yeah. the Warrior Bowl, is yeah, that the stadium in South Grand Prairie High School? Am I getting that right? I, I see you did your research. <laughs> <laughs> we that try. That's what we do. No, no, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that's the stadium that uh, I grew up playing high school football in. Um, played there for four years. I would say, like, it's, that's, that's an important place to me is because, you know, a lot of memories were made there. Um, in Texas, you know, you get, like, a lot of those, like, super teams, and mm -hmm. that's just kind of how it is. Maybe in Georgia it's like that too, or Florida. But, like, my high school was literally – people I played with were guys that I grew up with in middle school and people that I've seen grow up like along the way. And then, then you go from playing with them in seventh grade to now I'm playing with them in 12th grade. Mm -hmm. Like it just kind of, it, it it's crazy because you, you've seen these guys develop and you like are able to like refer back to earlier moments. So I would say like a lot of special games happen there. Cause I think when you are able to accomplish things together with guys, you've done it for a long time, it hits different because mm -hmm. I can, I'm able to hit them up now and then like, Hey, remember when we did this? in 11th grade and it's like yeah I do mm -hmm. that was special to me I still remember that I love that and there is this one picture when we were doing our research and I can't remember if you posted it or if it was something that we had read but I think you're a running back or something were you running back in yeah, yeah. High school? I school okay that's now. right that's right uh you you were running down the sideline and it's just this like quintessential I feel like not just like high I do school, remember that. Yeah, yeah. Not just like high school football photo, but like Texas high school football yep. photo. Yeah, I remember that. And it's like you can see the stands, and I assume it was at the Warrior Bowl mm -hmm. where y'all played, but you could just see the stands, and everybody was just like, it, it was the, a level of excitement that I feel like can only be captured like in like a moment that's really special. Do you remember yeah, yeah, that? Yeah, no, yeah, that was that was uh, the rivalry game. Cause uh, I went, was it? Always. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to South Grand Prairie High School, and then we were playing Grand Prairie High School. Ooh. And the stadium was kind of like a stadium that we both share, kind of like the Giants and the Jets. Gotcha. Okay. So like the whole city was out there, and like so you could just feel the energy in the stadium that night. And I think it was my that was my last time playing them, and so obviously going four and zero against them was important. Right. So like I think I made like a long run, got a first down, momentum shifting type of play, and like the energy in that stadium in that moment was just real captivating. So. I felt it, yeah. so I want to want to make sure they felt me as well. <laughs> I love you know it. I, mean? I know. It's, so, it's just like, it's my favorite picture. Yeah, 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 like, my that. dad <laughs> was a high school football coach, still is. He came out of retirement recently. Now he's coaching again really? at the high school level. Yeah. And he, I don't know, just being around like 
the Friday night football. Like there is something in I just, Texas. Yeah, no, it, no, no, in Georgia, hit, in Georgia, in oh, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it hits the same in Georgia. It, as it, 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 it hits very ask, similarly. Yeah. I have to say, okay, like, I'm just from looking, California. Right? Yeah, it doesn't hit at all. It doesn't hit at all. No, 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 no. But so, can can you describe to someone who's never been to a Texas Friday night, close the town down. What's that experience like, especially as a five star recruit, right? right I, mean, yeah. I mean, like, what was that experience like? I would say, like, unless you have another point of reference, like, sometimes you could fool yourself to think that that's the norm of how football games are uh -huh. played across the country, right? Yeah, and, and then it's you go, not. And it's, <laughs> and that's, that's not the reality yeah. of things. Like, so I think people can actually underestimate just how crazy it is if that's your everyday experience. But then when you go to like another state, you'll see like, wait, this isn't as packed. It, is, it feels a little bit different. But when you're like having whole arenas just completely filled with fans and it's going crazy and like you're saying, things are shut down, mm -hmm. I think you realize the magnitude of Texas football and like just the pride mm -hmm. of football in the state. And I mean, so so let's 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 tailor it to your experience, right? You're a big time uh, recruit. What thirty offers? Thirty plus? Yeah. That's, like, that. that's yeah. like a few, <laughs> yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Your your mailbox is probably constantly full. Uh, I mean, like, <laughs> what's that experience like in Texas with that type of attention? I'm sure everybody wanted you to go to Texas, right? But I mean, you know, to to to, to have that level of attention, like, what was that personal experience like for you, especially as a junior? Mm. Uh, I would say to me, it was really a blessing because, like I said, the high school I went to, uh, we were competitive, but we weren't like a powerhouse in the state by any means, so. There weren't necessarily a lot of guys that I came before me that had kind of gone into that type of national attention, like to have like uh, the Alabamas, the Ohio States, mm -hmm. the Georgias, um, heavily recruiting me. That was that was something that was different. Like people hadn't really seen that in my school. Mm -hmm. So to have like Urban Meyer come to my school, um, taking back Bob Stoops come to my school, like wow. those those kind of coaches. That was really it was it was actually special for me because I didn't necessarily coming into high school assuming that was going to be my reality just because I hadn't seen it been done by another person. Interesting. So once that started taking place, to me it felt like I was in a movie. Like yeah. I couldn't I couldn't necessarily even though you believe in yourself, you believe in your talent level, um I guess you just don't necessarily think those opportunities come at that at that school I was at. So for that to happen, it was special for me because it not only gave me a chance to, you know, take my game to another level, but I believe that it opened up doors for the guys that were underneath me to right. potentially gain exposure to and, you know, ultimately provide for their families as well. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, I think that makes sense just because you talk about just like the exposure. Yeah, exactly. Level, that, it, that if you come to see me, then. Mm -hmm. But you're still and, watching and the then, game. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're still watching the yeah. game and then maybe this other guy catches your eye. Mm -hmm. And then so maybe you don't land me, but on the flip side, you now added another prospect that, hey, I'm kind of interested in this guy too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to recruit him as well. Mm -hmm. and, and that's another opportunity for him, so. I like to think that that that, that provided some people opportunities. Yeah, and kind of put your school on the map, yeah. and you know. Yeah. I don't want to say that, but you know. <laughs> right. I, yeah. You can say that. Yeah. I can do yeah. that for yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now yeah. it, when it came time to I guess make a decision, I know you've been asked this before in your career, but why Ohio State? Why was that somewhere that you were like, you know what, this is where I want to be? I picked Ohio State. I would say like it was two different things. Um, one. I mean, obviously, you want to think about how the football is going to play out. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, they they had they were developing a really like strong tradition of putting out a lot of first round DBs. Totally, yeah. Which told me that they had like a blueprint of how it's supposed to be done because I think if you're able to sustain success for a, a certain amount of time, I, at some point it doesn't become coincidental. Mm. It becomes like an intentional type of thing. And then on top of that, like the plan that Coach Meyer was setting up for life after football, mm -hmm. and the networking things he had. And I know he had job fairs. We had this thing called Real Life Wednesday where we would kind of discuss, like, you know, other type of job opportunities in case the football didn't pan out. That was interesting to me because I know, obviously, as much as everyone wants to go to the NFL, like, the reality is that not a lot of people do accomplish that right, accomplish yeah. that goal. So, like, just to have plans set out so that if it didn't work, you weren't kind of left out to dry. You kind of had different just – maybe you didn't know what you were going to do, but you had your mind headed in another direction. Mm -hmm. That was important to me just because I wanted to make sure that with an opportunity like this that I wasn't naive to the fact that I didn't come around often, yep. that I um, basically took the best opportunity. Mm -hmm. I love that. When Now you talk about having different opportunities. What, 
what did you want to be when you grew up? I was totally going to ask that question. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you, if you're not thinking in the lens of football, what was something that you wanted to do when you grew up? I would, I got to say, what age? Like what age? Was <laughs> <you> <laughs> okay. It, change, it, change, it changes. Okay. What, if you, if you didn't have football at like 18, what 18. were you kind of like thinking of? 18, 18 mm -hmm. I was at our house day. Yeah. Honestly, I wanted to be a movie critic. Like, really? I love it. I was oh. like, I watch a lot of movies. Like, I, 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 I could, that. I could do this. I know there's probably some money in this industry somewhere. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I wanted to be a movie critic, like Rotten Tomato or something like that. You know, but I was just grinding out all the streaming services. Like, I was up to date with all the stuff. Like, <laughs> I was, I'm pretty informed. I mean, so. we can carve out a page on our atlantafalcons.com right for, yeah for jeff okuda uh, yeah, yeah right like we just come in <laughs> right. be like guardians of the galaxy volume three yeah, right yeah, here, yeah. here we go exactly yeah, yeah. we'll put you in like the main studio with the big screen where you're just like watching it it's like pause here's what i love <laughs> i'm just saying yeah mm -hmm. i think it's a great idea the opportunities <laughs> right endless um yeah so as you're you know going to ohio state right um and I, I think uh, if I recall, well, actually, let me back up. I got lost in my notes here for a second. Uh, um, but, but yeah, so like, I remember a story, I think maybe that like you brought it up. Cause there were, cause like there were times where, where like uh, your, your mom wasn't able to attend mm -hmm. games because yeah. she was, you know, going through some health Mm -hmm. uh, related issues and she had a quote or something where she oh, says oh yeah she said maybe you said it or, or you said she said it but it was something along along the lines of like she would pull up like youtube videos of you playing so that that's what it was she would know whether you were like truthful or not about the how good you were yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great you know, my mom she had immigrated from africa nigeria so she wasn't necessarily familiar with the game, the game of football. Right. So like obviously, like people could tell her that you know I'm a good player and all that stuff, uh -huh. but she wasn't necessarily. She didn't know how to, how to gauge and like how to judge it. And on top of that, she was pretty like afraid of the sport because obviously, yeah, it's, literally, it's, 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 it's a physical sport. Uh -huh. Yeah. So like when she'd watch the game, she'd always like ah, like, I can't like <laughs> no, be, be careful, be careful, and like <laughs> yeah. she'd always be super cautious. So when I come home, like sometimes I would see her like watching my highlights and things like that. Cause yeah. she couldn't make it to all the games because right. of health conditions and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So when I come home, I'd watch. Uh, I see her watching it, and I could tell like how proud of uh, how proud of me she was, and uh, that was special for me. Yeah, and like I was gonna say, like, even if she didn't know about the game, seeing yeah. what you what you were able to do with it, mm -hmm. she had to be like beaming with pride, yeah, <laughs> especially when she's exactly. seeing you do all these, you know, great things with it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I like I like to think that she's still looking down, like just proud of you know. I did the things that I said I was gonna accomplish. You know, at that age, I always, you know, envisioned just being able to make it to the NFL and then be able to provide for her in a different type of way, um, get her better healthcare services. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I would like to think that you know she's proud that, you know, as a man, I did everything I said I was gonna do. That's awesome, and I think like just her story too of like you know we were talking about like coming here from Nigeria and yeah. uh, creating a new life for you and your sister, yeah. right? Like, I mean, I just feel like that is. It, her story, I think, is a very powerful story. No, no, for sure. And I, I would say, like, for me personally, like, when I was going through the injuries and, like, the Achilles thing, I would always kind of refer back to, like, her resiliency and how she responded to adversity in her life. And uh, that would kind of, like, pave the path for, okay, if she was able to do it, then there's no reason why I can't overcome whatever I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was just kind of having her as a role model yeah, right exactly. to be able to be like exactly. okay like this isn't how would my mom handle this right? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and uh having your sister and having um the support system around you no matter whether it's friends or family like how important has that been when you were going through difficult times as a young kid mm -hmm. and like how important was that to kind of like support you and keep you kind of going and helping you realize all of these dreams that you had set up yeah, no, for me personally, I think my family is just like, I put them on like the ultimate pedestal because, you know, one of the African proverbs that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. So I know that for me personally, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at without the help of others just because my mom was so sick. Um, so my aunt and her family took a lot of care of me, my other aunt, mm -hmm. like they just provided that kind of support, that guidance, which allowed me to not be alone or not feel alone. And yeah. I was always able to lean on somebody else and not, even though my mom was sick and she couldn't be here, well, I'd have my aunt come and she'd come to the games, she'd support me and she'd come to my jersey ceremonies. So, like, I always try to make sure that I take care of them just because I know when I was um, coming up and 
obviously in a different situation that they were taking care of me. Yeah. Mm. Man. Yeah. No, that's pretty powerful stuff. And I know like, uh, I don't know, I don't know if people can see, but you're actually wearing a necklace that has uh, Africa on it. If, if that's correct, if I can see. Right. Yeah. Why, you know, I think people talk a lot about their heritage. Why is that something that you, you know, want people to know of and to be like, hey, look, like this is my heritage and this is what I'm proud of. I would say like the older I've gotten, um, just definitely started embra embracing it more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up, obviously you want to be a little, like you want to do what everyone else is doing. Yeah, right. So I would say growing up, I didn't really embrace my heritage much, but then as I got older, I had to like sort of type of epiphany that this is what makes me unique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, being African and everything that comes with being African is something that you should take pride in. Mm -hmm. So if you're different, then it doesn't matter because you're, you're different, but you're unique. Mm -hmm. So I've tried to, as I've gotten older, you know, definitely put that, my ethnicity, my like Nigerian culture at the forefront of a lot of things that I do and pay homage to the country as much as possible because like, honestly, like there's a lot of great athletes, great people that have come from that country and just try to, you know, from I, I have a seven on seven team. Mm -hmm. Um, in Nigeria right now and just like I got plans you know just bring awareness of the sport over to Africa so that you know they could, those kids over there can provide opportunities for the family as well yeah because I know you see a lot of times like the basketball players that come from Africa to America and they have such success and they're able to do all these tremendous things like whether it's a like Giannis or Joel Embiid yeah mm -hmm. um, I, I honestly believe that you could find a lot of those athletes I mean, you see, um, we have David on the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who's from Legos. Um, mm -hmm. AK. Yeah. Our lady Katie. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So you see a lot of the talent. I, I think that, honestly, it's untapped. It's a lot of untapped talent in, in the country. So just bringing that awareness over there, I, I think you're going to pull a lot of athletes from there. Yeah. I think it's cool, too. I, I've said this, and I'm, I'm pitching this. Everybody consider this. I <laughs> think we should have, like, a group of, of guys, like, go over and do, like, a Falcons camp in Africa. That would be I, awesome. Yeah. I would love that. I think that would be so freaking awesome. That would be, be awesome. Yeah. So you have a seven-on-seven seven team over there? Yeah. That's cool. D that, that, that just kind of – you know, like that's how you learn the fundamentals of the game. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. It's a lot cheaper. It's like a, You're not yeah. buying, yeah. you know, I'm pads and helmets mm -hmm. and stuff, mm -hmm. and they can just go, um, go out there and play. How, uh, when did you start that? I started that. I would say it's been run, up and running for two years. My oh, aunt cool. Takes, yeah, my aunt takes care of it. Um, like I said, like the big thing that we all sat down and talked about is that you really can't take any steps forward unless you're educated and, and have awareness about the sport. Yeah. yeah. So I, that was what we kind of wanted to build our foundation on, is you know educating them on the rules of the sport, you know, the techniques of the sport. And then, you know, when that, when we kind of accomplish that, then we'll put them in pads and then we'll start doing things like that. Mm -hmm. But it's obviously a progressive thing. That's so cool. I know. I See, love that. Yeah. They, you, you can do all the research in like in the world and still not come yeah. up with right. my favorite part of this podcast I so know, far. Yeah. No, I love it. That's, that's the best part of this podcast is yeah. we get to learn more things about you guys. So, and, and now that you here in the eight cell now we're gonna completely yeah, fast forward because yeah, 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 yeah. because <laughs> I, I was thinking it i saw on uh social media a lot that you were doing some off-season workouts with aj right yeah and, and that and that kind of got us thinking because you went through the draft process with aj you guys are both yeah. kind of first round talents and stuff mm -hmm. like that did, did, did you have a chance to get to know him then have you guys I mean, like, well, something I just thought about that was actually COVID year. Oh, right? it was. Like, so, so there probably wasn't a lot of interaction. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was always familiar with AJ. Um, just from Ohio State, mm -hmm. he played Clemson, Clemson. my uh, yeah. last college game. You know, when they cheated. I was always familiar with them. Uh, um, all through college or with AJ, uh -huh. and then, um. Coming back from my Achilles, I started training with um, Oliver Davis, who trains AJ as well. Yeah. Okay, okay, so that's the connection. Yeah, so then when I came to one of the sessions, AJ was there, mm -hmm. and actually, you know, we working out together, we started talking, mm -hmm. and so after that kind of kept, kept like, I mean, I'm watching the defensive film, so I could like watch the Falcons games whenever they're playing an opponent, and see him making plays, and it was pretty cool to see. And then I remember one workout I had maybe in March, um, I was asking OD, uh, who's, who's the Falcons' other corner? Mm -hmm. He was like, I'm not 100% sure. Right. And then I was like, all right. Hey. <laughs> like a, a, a seed is planted <laughs> and, now, back then. and then we kept working out. And then it was like cool to see that like, maybe like two or three weeks later, mm 
mm-hmm. I was down in Atlanta Falcon. Like God works in mysterious ways. Mm-hmm. Like it, it was it was a wild thing. So I mean, I'm excited for the opportunity to like get with him. And I mean, I I think that you know, sky's the limit. You just got to put in the work every single day. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been to see how many new faces, especially, are, are on defense. I know we don't yeah. talk a lot about football and st- is, stuff right. like that, but yeah. it's like kind of like what uh, Calais was saying, like why he wanted to come here. Is he kind of he felt like a groundswell mm-hmm. that something special like could be done yeah. here. Mm-hmm. You've only been around for a couple of weeks. You, you kind of get that sense. You got Jesse Bates here. You got Calais. You got AJ. You're here now. Mm-hmm. Is there kind of some I don't know confidence at least kind of being built here? Like hey man, like maybe we can do something. Yeah, no, no, I think that we have the right group of guys in the room. I think everyone's committed to the same goal. And it's pretty cool having veterans, like guys who've played a lot of seasons in the league, you know, say that things like, you know, I think that we're building something special here Mm -hmm. because I can obviously feel like that, but like they've played for a long enough time that they truly know what something special is being formed. So for them to have that testimony, I I think it it pays tremendous dividends to, you know, the front office and what they've been trying to accomplish here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you were probably in like, diapers when Calais was out there. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> he, 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 he is an older guy, but, but that's, I mean, there's a lot of wisdom to be gained. A lot of wisdom, a lot of wisdom. Yes. Yeah, and still pretty good at what he does. Right, yeah. Monster, beast. I can't wait to have him on the podcast to, to grill him about being yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we have to do that, although I'm still technically older than him, which really... Um, I I think we're down to the portion of the podcast Tori and I absolutely love called Rapid Fire Rapid Fire it's it's five questions everybody well mostly everybody gets the same five questions you will appreciate one it is about a movie so that'll be good yeah yeah, we do Um, have one about a movie so are you ready the pressure's on let's do it All right. (laughs) question number one what's your favorite play of your career and this can be professional it can be college it could be high school at the warrior bowl <laughs> favorite play of my career mm-hmm. um first nfl interception against kyler murray nice against uh, kyler murray wow i love it too because i think uh when we had jesse on the podcast he also like named the quarterback that he caught yeah you got, yep. you, you got right, to right that's like a i think it's a rite of passage yep he yeah. he picked Derek carr and he was that's what he, he said. was very happy yeah. about it yeah <laughs> Um, number two, who is your favorite athlete regardless of sport? Or like who was it when you were a kid, I guess? Uh, LeBron James. LeBron Always, always got to appreciate his sustained success. Mm, good point. Uh, he number- might be like Calais' age. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Calais is going to be so mad that all we're doing on this podcast is talking about how old he is. Shout out, shout out Calais, though. Yeah. <laughs> shout out Calais. Now, um, <laughs> here's a good one. Your favorite movie or TV show that you're really into right now? Right now, mm-hmm. snowfall. 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 I'm, I'm like, I'm in season one. Like, I'm so uh, far yeah, no, back. No, you, you behind. You yeah, behind. <laughs> it's gonna take you. Some of my spoiler okay. for you. For you, for you, for you there are spoilers for the podcast. <laughs> okay, well then, well since I know that you're such a big movie guy, what's your favorite movie? Training Day. Training Day. Oh, the, that's great. I like it when it takes like zero seconds. To, I know like, me too. He knows yeah. right away. Yo. Yeah. I'm yeah. like Star Wars: A New Hope. <laughs> Usual suspects. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Uh, what is your favorite emoji, and why is it the chili pepper emoji? Oh, um, I'm so glad are, you brought we, this up. So, so are we assuming that's a ch- that chili emoji? I, I, I'm <laughs> assuming that it is because that's the one that I've seen you use the most on Instagram. Okay. Okay. That, that's fair. That's a fair assumption. Okay. <laughs> but I, I would say it's incorrect, though. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. I, I would say it's incorrect. Because I would say the chili pepper, you can't just use it in casual conversations. Otherwise, oh, yeah. some kind of conceited, just keep dropping chili peppers <laughs> right. in a text message thread. I kind of like the, the I like the face that smiles with like a little like teardrop. Yes, oh, yeah, where it's kind it's of kind of like, like mm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I tend to be like an awkward person. I'm like, hey. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that one. I like that one. There needs to be it's one really... with like the finger gun emoji. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, good one. That, that's probably my favorite one though. <laughs> If you had a superpower, what would it be and why? Right now, I would say flying because this AT- ATL traffic is crazy. <laughs> right. You when definitely want to go patch. above the 85. <laughs> <laughs> it is no, the worst. It takes me like an hour 15 to get home, and it's just like 
it's I just like put on my murder podcast and just drive. <laughs> I, yeah, if, I, if I could fly, I'd probably live in the city because uh, right, yeah, it's some nice properties out there. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are some really nice homes. I was driving around. I was trying to beat traffic and stay off of the highway the other day, and I was driving around. I was like, oh, if only no. like I could get one of these homes. These right. are nice. Right, or, or just be invisible so I don't get held up at the Atlanta airport. Ah, uh, see, <laughs> that's another one. Teleportation. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah right, <laughs> right. That one. Right. And on that note, yeah. we have wrapped another freaking awesome edition of the Falcons In Focus that podcast presented exactly. by Ticketmaster in the Ticketmaster studio. So please do what y'all do. Rate, review, subscribe, five stars if you wouldn't mind. Comment on YouTube, all that fun stuff. <laughs> and we will come back to you very soon with another awesome podcast. Jeff Okuda, thank you so much for joining us, man. This was rad. Respectfully. <laughs> <laughs>